This is my 2022 Ford F-150 Lightning Lariat model with the extended range, and I have officially had it for one year. In this video, I'm gonna tell you everything good, bad, and ugly about my Ford F-150 Lightning, the things I like about it, the things I absolutely hate, whether I'm gonna keep the vehicle, all of that kind of stuff. But before I go any further in the video, make sure you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss future updates just like this one. So the first thing is, let's tell you about the miles. I've got just over 16,000 miles on the odometer and as far as reliability is concerned it's been pretty much flawless there was one small little issue with the hubs up front there was a tsb out there that if you're having these particular noises make sure to take it into your dealership we are a dealership in bessemer in pell city alabama and we were able to get that knocked out in like an hour so it's very very minimal now i will tell you that i'm going to also cover the cost of charging I have actually been tracking every single time that I've charged this vehicle, and I'm gonna cover in detail with you what I have paid to have this thing fast charged and also talk about slow charging as well and kind of show you what those cost differences are. But as far as reliability, it's been very reliable. Uh, I am still getting the same estimated range on the vehicle if I drive it like I'm supposed to. The problem is, is if I'm going anywhere, I'm doing 80 miles an hour. And at 80 miles an hour, electric vehicles don't like that aerodynamics and it cuts your range down significantly. If I need the extra range, uh, I've got it because I can just slow down to 70, 75 miles an hour. The good thing is that I can travel to the beach, I can travel to the mountains, and I can make it there without having to fast charge. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, I don't like the Lightning because you can't tow, do truck things with it. You can't tow. Well, I don't tow anything. The only thing I tow around is my kids. Uh, it's a great commuter vehicle, especially for someone that's taller like me. I'm six foot three, and so I fit in this vehicle very, very well. And let's talk about a couple of the things that I absolutely love about the truck. Let's start with this mega power frunk. To open it up, there's three ways that you can get in there. There's a button located on the dashboard. There's a button located right here at the grill. And there is also a Ford Pass Connect app, where if you just click and hold the button, it automatically opens up. Side note, I did not realize I was going to like the uh, phone as a key, which basically I don't have my keys for this vehicle on me. I haven't kept the vehicle's keys inside of this vehicle uh, pretty much since I've owned it. I love phone as a key. But this massive space has actually been one of my favorite features. So this is the mega power frunk is what Ford calls it. I've got a my medic kit because I've got kids that are act crazy sometimes. But one of the things that I love about this mega power front, you know we do YouTube stuff. So we're constantly charging batteries. We're constantly charging drones. I can put my backpack and all of our camera gear up here and I can actually charge all of that camera equipment while I'm driving down the road. The fact that there's a brand new storage unit in the front of the vehicle and it can charge all of the gear that we need is absolutely a game changer for me and I absolutely love it. But if you do decide that you wanna go tailgating, you lift up this particular piece right here and you've got an, uh, basically a cooler. You can load it up with ice and when you're done, just let it all drain out. One of the things I love about the F-150 Lightning is that it is so very similar to a normal F-150, especially when it comes to the bed and inside the cabin area. Specifically speaking, it is really nice to have a bed cover that fits on a normal 5.0 V8 F-150, also fits the F-150 Lightning. It's not a unique part number. Now, I'm going to show you inside of the bed area, but literally as we were filming it, I've noticed something for the very first time that I've actually got condensation inside of my light bar. I've not seen that. I do know that there was actually a recall out there for that saying that condensation could get in there and cause potentially a fire. I don't know if that, apparently mine it might be affected, <laughs> but uh, I didn't realize my actually had condensation until I was literally getting ready to film this particular bit. So it's very interesting to see that. If I'm not the most transparent YouTuber out there when it comes to automotive, I don't know what is because what other Ford dealership would actually show you that? But anyways, on the inside of the bed of the truck, there's really not a whole lot to look at because it's just like a normal truck. If you need more power than what the front trunk can provide, the beautiful thing is you've actually got up to 7.2 kilowatts worth of max power coming out of the bed of the vehicle. Now that we're on the inside of the F-150 Lightning, I wanna talk about some of the things that I love and hate on the inside here as well. So what I love is you've got the same familiar center console shifter. You have still got, and this actually is really nice, especially if you're fast charging, is you've got your interior work surface. This is a really good place 
to grab you a bite to eat and eat while the vehicle is fast charging, which, you know what, let's just go ahead and jump into the fast charging data right now. So I've got all of this information saved on my phone because I have actually gone through and I have kept track of every single time that I have fast charged. Now, the beautiful thing is I have only really needed to use two different networks. Number one was the Blue Oval Charge Network, and there were also a couple of times that I used a charge point charger. Now, the fun fact is, is since we're a Model E certified elite dealer for both of our locations, we're actually installing level three fast chargers at 160 kW at both of our locations. And the fun fact is we're actually installing the latest and greatest charge point chargers at those locations. And so those are coming very, very soon. You can check us out on plug share. We've already got those uh, under construction is going to be starting very, very soon. I've got every single one of those transactions saved. And all in all, I have actually done a fast charger 32 different times. Over the course of an entire year, I've only done a fast charger 32 times. And I've done a lot of traveling. I really have. I've gone to the beach quite a few different times. I've gone to the mountains quite a few different times. I even drove this thing from Birmingham all the way down to Orlando, Florida and back. I've intentionally tried to use the fast charging as much as I possibly could and I still only used it 32 times. And across those 32 different times, I have only used 1,283 kilowatt hours worth of energy. If you're new to the EV game, you, that may not make a whole lot of sense to you. But what it boils down to is over the course of a year, I've only spent $248.68 for the entire year's worth of fast charging. Well, Mitchell, what about the what about the electricity charge you charge at home? Okay, well, I've got some things to tell you there as well. A lot of employers offer free level 2 charging for their employees. Town and Country Ford is one of those. And so I've actually been doing all of my around town driving completely free. But let's pretend that I did have to charge at home. So a couple of facts for you. The vehicle has been driven 16,532 miles. And what I've actually been averaging, as you can see right here on the screen, is you've got two miles per kilowatt hour. That's an average over 9,400 miles. That's more than half of what I've got on the odometer. I've been tracking this. So in the wintertime and in the summertime, on average, I'm getting two miles per kilowatt hour. Mitchell, that's terrible. You're right, because I drive it like I stole it. I'm a kid at heart, and I love to accelerate fast to get on the interstate. And then when I'm on the interstate, I do 80 miles an hour everywhere I go. And so the fact that I am doing 80 miles an hour and averaging two miles per kilowatt hour is actually pretty darn impressive, in my opinion. I've got 16,532 miles on the odometer. Let's just go ahead and, and just say that it's 2.05 miles per kilowatt hour. And so if you factor that up, consuming on average total, this vehicle has consumed 8,064 kilowatt hours, all in all. And so if you factor that in, you got 1,283 kilowatt hours for fast charging and you got 6,700 kilowatt hours for home or work charging. I've actually calculated it out. My house gets 14 cents per kilowatt hour. That's what I pay for electricity at my house. So if I were to charge at home, $949 would be my cost to charge at home for an entire year. There's people that spend that in gas in a month or two. And so it does actually save some serious money. Uh, all in all, if I would have had to pay for all of my charging, I would have spent $1,200 for the entire year to operate this vehicle fuel economy wise. That's still a lot of money. Yeah, it is. It, it, it is. You People think that an electric vehicle, your cost goes to zero. It doesn't, but I wanted to factor in what does it cost compared to like a 5.0? Because shameless plug, we have an awesome video out there where we interview technicians, certified senior master technicians on what engine they would pick in the F-150. I'll make sure that we link it up there for you to, to take a look at that. So I wanted to compare that to the 5.0. Same exact thing, averaging 19 miles per gallon. Long story short is with the current price of gas, you'd be looking at $3,045. So what it boils down to is the F-150 Lightning in my case, driving it like I stole it saved me $1,900 in fuel savings. Now, also keep in mind that I would have gotten my oil changed three times during this time frame. Uh, I didn't need that because guess what? It doesn't have any oil. And so when you factor that in and the $7,500 tax credit this vehicle now qualifies for if you buy one brand new, yeah, it saved me a significant amount of money up front. 
but not enough to justify the increased cost of the vehicle itself. So let me tell you exactly why I'm bringing all of this up is because when I originally bought this F-150 Lightning, my goal was to buy it, maybe drive it for six months, experience what it's like to actually drive an electric vehicle every single day and sell it. Whether I flip it and make some money or sell it and lose some money, the goal there was to just experience it. And so what actually ended up happening is I bought the vehicle, I kept it for six months and I said, dang, I kind of really like this vehicle. In fact, I love driving it. I've had so many people say, this is nothing but an oversized golf cart. And I would actually say, yes, it is. You're meaning that as a dig or as an insult. I'm actually meaning it as a, the best compliment ever. It's easy to drive. There's no shifting in the vehicle. It's smooth, strong power. And realistically for a round trip driving, if you're driving across the country, this might not be the best option for you. But if you do a whole lot of in-town commuting like I do, this is a phenomenal option, especially when you factor in something that this vehicle has, which is called Blue Cruise. Blue Cruise is one of the reasons that I love this vehicle so much, that I can drive an hour from our Bessemer location to our Pell City location to check on both stores. And unless I have to change lanes or change interstates, the vehicle drives itself all the way from one location to the other on that interstate. And the cool thing is, is that, that Ford's coming out with an update very soon where the vehicle will able to be able to change lanes for you. You just hit the blinker and it changes lanes for you. I believe Consumer Reports actually says that the Blue Cruise system is the best hands-free driving system on the market, beating out everyone. And I'd have to agree, it is phenomenal. It would be a game changer if my Bronco had that option. But at the end of the day, I want you guys to understand that this video is not intended to be political. So many people take a, uh, an electric vehicle and they try and politicize them. I think that's the reason in the South people are not taking them up as fast as, as I think they probably should. How about this is just a different tool and a different fuel for a different type of a job and it doesn't fit in everybody's life. And I'm not that kind of person that says, hey, everybody needs to drive EV. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying for me in my life and commuting back and forth to work and commuting the kids around, this thing is fantastic. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, make sure you are subscribed to the channel with the bell notification turned on so you don't miss a single video. Peace.